Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. My name is Anessa and I am an indie author from Toronto, Canada and I publish under the pen name of A and Sage. Um, today we are back to our world building mini series and we are going to talk about probably my favorite part of world building a fantasy novel, which is the magic system. So if you're into finding out how I figure out my magic system or what some of my tips and advice are for creating a magic system that can sustain not just a full length novel, but an entire series and one that reads realistic, as realistic as magic can be to your readers, then make sure to stick around because we'll be back in just a second. It's a magical day here in Toronto, Canada. Um, the weather is a little bit warmer outside and I think spring is finally in the air. And the best part of this day is like I mentioned in the intro, we are talking about building a magic system and what it takes to create one that is not only functional, but is, well, <laughs> magical. Um, this is my favorite part of writing fantasy novels. Um, the reason that I write them is for that theatrical sense of it all, the fantasy. And magic is a huge part of that. And so while all of the points of world building that we've talked about so far are incredibly interesting, very important to plotting your novel, I think when it comes down to planning your magic system, it just holds like a very specific and special place in my heart because it really is the basis of pretty much all of my novels. I mean, even if you look at Cartega, it is a sci-fi, but it's a sci-fi fantasy mashup. And so there is, of course, magic in it. So what are some of my tips for planning out your magic system? My main one, and what you should probably start with, is defining the use of your magic. Um, how does it work? Is it considered to be normal in your world, or is it only certain people that have it? Are those people looked down upon? Um, are they coveted? Um, is the magic trained, um, meaning does somebody need to train to get use of it, or is it something you're born with? So is it just an intrinsic magic that kind of flows through your blood system? Um, in the sense of witches, for example, um, is witchcraft something that is learned, or are the witches or the, the coven in your book, do they need to be born with this magic? Is it just something that's in them? So figuring out what the use of this magic is and exactly how it works from the basic kind of line of it is very important because it gives you a guideline of where the magic can grow, how it can grow, um, and where it can it cannot be in your story. Now, one good thing that I really like to do when I'm trying to define my magic use is I think about how it would work in a real life setting. So if you're thinking about urban fantasy, how does that magic intertwine with the rest of the world? And that gives me a guideline of where it comes from. Um, in Shadowhurst, for example, while there is magic and it is witchcraft magic, there's also shapeshifters, etc. But the, the magic portion of it belongs to the witches. And they are not, this is not something that they have intrinsically, right? They use elements, so it's elemental magic. So they rely heavily on crystals and potions and herbs and things that they find in the earth, so to speak. And it's very different from other witchcraft magics in different books where you could basically um, create like a fireball with just thinking about it or just tapping into your inner ma magic, right? Um, and it's a good way for me to kind of um, set that magic system for my particular novel because I knew ahead of time that there's going to be exceptions to this magic use. Um, that's the protagonist um, who can do it without needing elements. Sorry, it's a tiny spoiler alert, but you find some of this out in the first book. So um, something like that was important to me is to understand what that magic use is um, and how it functions for the rest of this world that I'm creating um, and if there's any outliers to its use. Um, the next thing you want to think about is identifying the user. So who has this magic? Who doesn't have this magic? Um, is there a straight division line between those who have it and those who don't have it? Do those who don't have it want it or do they hate it? Um, so figuring out exactly who in your story has magic, 
and can use it um, in whatever way you've already defined based on its use is very important because once you identify that, you have your key players, right? Um, so there's it depends on how you want to play it. You could say that your protagonist is the one and uh, her and her kind or him and his kind um, have the magic, or you could say that it's the opposite, that they might not. And the people who have the magic are the not so good ones, right? So there's different ways to kind of play on the users. Um, and it will kind of also feeds into more of the politics, which is what we'll talk about next week, because we touched on characters last week. Um, but you might have factions of people who have magic and then factions of people who don't. Um, and it might define the entire environmental like state of your world, that politics world. Um, and it will give you more conflict as you direct your story forward, which is incredibly important. And then you also want to think about the history of magic. So magic doesn't just come out of nowhere, right? Especially in any really intricate and designed world. It has to have started somewhere. Um, are you writing about the time that magic came about? That could be where you take off. Or you might already be in the world that magic exists in. Um, and so you want to think about how it got there. Think about the history. What happened to create this magic? Um, was there a rift? Um, did people all of a sudden develop special abilities? Is it because of some nuclear explosion? Something triggered this magic in people because as a reader, you're reading it as who you are now and you know, hey, I don't have magic. I, I don't know anybody who has magic. Like my sister doesn't have it, you know? Um, and so they are coming at it as readers from a point of view of disbelief. And you need to make them believe it. And in order for them to believe it, there needs to be an explanation. Um, that explanation shouldn't come as an info dump, but it should be slowly developed. So you start to understand how this magic came about in your world. So your reader gets invested and they drop their guard and start to think, you know what? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, magic can happen. It's totally real. It can happen anytime because the way that it was explained and the way that it was presented is that it logically came about. And so what you want is a magic system that is realistically set in your world, meaning that it's not something that just randomly appeared now, they took years and decades for it to get there. Um, maybe not years and decades, but however long it took, it has to make sense. Um, and the one thing that I always try to think about is that usually any kind of power, any kind of um, energy source or anything that kind of directs an entire society in a way, it develops over time, right? So your magic might start really small at the beginning in this history of your world and slowly grow and evolve because that is what people do. And that what we understand as readers is what people do, right? We don't understand necessarily fantasy, but we do relate to evolution and how things develop and they grow and they get bigger and they morph. And so your magic likely would have done the same thing. So definitely spend some time plotting out the history behind your magic, because you will see that once you start, whatever you thought it might be, you will end up with something so completely different and so completely wonderful. And that's exactly where you want to end up. You want to end up with a history infused magic system that has a backbone and like a foot to stand on. So after you're done with the history of this intense magic system that you're developing, you want to figure out how you can set limitations to it. And this is very important. And a lot of times I see people who don't necessarily take this into account. Nothing is infinite. There is always limitations to everything. And so whatever magic you come up with, you need to know where that line is. Um, there should always be things that your magical creatures or people th that they cannot do. Um, you need to give them something to fight against and you need to give that magic system some kind of internal conflict within itself. Um, for example, like if you are, let's say, which is again, just because it's top of my mind, I'm about to release book six and shadow her. So I'm all about the witches. Um, and so 
think about witches, right? Maybe when they cast spells or do or perform any kind of magic, maybe it depletes their energy, right? That's a limitation. And because it gives you um, kind of an idea of how much they can't do. Um, and it will become incredibly important as you start raising the stakes for your protagonist, especially if they're a magical protagonist, because you can put these road bumps in their way, right? That kind of slows them down and it really affects the pacing of your entire novel because there's going to be times when they use too much magic and then they're just out of the fight, right? And so they have to de develop or um, kind of lean on a different skill set to defeat the bad guy or get through whatever conflict or situation you've thrown, hurled really their way. Um, and it's very important to have these limitations. And then when you're thinking about limitations in your magic, you also want to think about the dangers of it. It kind of goes hand in hand. Um, a lot of times people split them up, but they think about it. I think of them as the same way. So what are the dangers of using magic? Um, is there any kind of um, rules or laws that govern it? Um, do they not allow magic use? Um can you get in trouble for using it? Um, can, uh, I, I don't know, can you shift the world in some way if you use too much of it? Um, or um, is the danger that if you don't use it, the world ends, right? And so you wanna think about these different, I mean, flaws really in your system poke some holes in it and keep those holes and grow them a little bit and make sure um, that they're there throughout your entire story. And once you have that laid out as you're writing, just always cross-reference that document um, and think of every scene you develop that includes any kind of magic use. Just kind of really critically look at it and think, is this realistic? Um, did I not give this person any flaws in how they're using their magic? Does it start start to like sound kind of unbelievable and over the top and super crazy? Because you don't want that, right? Because then realistically, your book should have finished on like page one. If they can just do anything, wave your magic wand and, you know, conflict averted, bad guy is caught and we're all safe for the day. But you can't have that, right? The whole uh, plot has to carry throughout these limitations because otherwise the hero would just, just save the day and we'd be done with it. Um, and as we know, that doesn't make for an interesting story. Uh, we like our healers to bleed, right? That's just, that's human nature. We want some bad stuff to happen to them because that's what our life is like and it mirrors it in a way. And so make sure that you definitely find some limitations and dangers to your magic system. And you also want to think, I kind of touched on it just a tiny bit, are uh, the rules and the laws governing it. So is it governed by any other faction, um, which we'll discuss more in the politics of this world building in next week's video, um, or are there like internal rules and laws within the magic system itself, just different directions that your character needs to kind of take, um, something to help them really uh, hone in this magic that they are now a part of in this magical world they're a part of part of and just make sure that you know you don't have to spell out the rules for your readers obviously we don't like that you know rule number one like no one cares like you're not getting a speeding ticket here but you want to have a list of these rules and laws for yourself because you're slowly going to like kind of breadcrumb them in throughout your story. Um, and as you tell the story, your reader will start to understand, oh no, they just did this thing and that's a bad thing because we've seen that other guy get go, get thrown in jail for using his magic in that way. Um, and Shadowhurst as an example, uh, Billy, the protagonist, she gets banished by her coven because she used magic in front of humans. And so right away you find out that there is laws, their coven set laws. So there's somebody, a group of people that is setting these rules and these laws for other witches. Um, and the consequences of it are pretty great, um, especially for Billy, who only knows magic in this world, right? Um, and so things like that, not only do they help you develop your character, uh, but they also help that magic system feel more grounded and more real, which is something you're really striving for. And there's also one more question that is kind of important. And these are like things, actually two more questions that I really think for me, they help me a lot when I'm developing and plotting magic systems. And it's really thinking about why is that magic? Why is your magic, this magic you're creating? 
Why is it necessary in your world? Um, and really try to think about it in like a really critical manner um, because, I mean, it shouldn't be just because you're writing a fantasy. And so you assume there's magic. That should never be the answer, right? Your magic has to be necessary for your world in order to exist in it, just like air is necessary in our world in order for us to live, right? Um, and so why is this magic there? Even if it appeared from something, let's say there was like a, a rift somewhere in some paranormal veil and all of a sudden there's magic everywhere. Um, we know that we've developed a history and we know in that particular example of why that rift happened and whatever that story was that you came up with, but why did the magic stick around? Did people try to get rid of it and couldn't or did it become like a really necessary part of the world? And if so, how? Um, does it help sustain something? Does it help sustain your main character? Um, and if it doesn't, how does it change them? It's very important to use magic, not just as the secondary kind of big shabam, like, ta-da, I have magic, it's a fantasy now, right? Um, but it, it has to be a tool that you use strategically throughout your entire novel. Um, you have to really think about the reasons why it's there. And if you truly ask yourself, like, Try to take that magic out. Put your character in whatever scenario that you are writing in a scene or in your entire novel even and take the magic out of it um, and see if that level of conflict that you need to be there for the novel to truly develop as something that is just amazing. Um, if you take that away and that conflict is still there um, and that struggle is still there and your protagonist overcoming the struggle, that emotion is still there, then you might not need the magic. It might have just been like a Vegas show, right? Like, poof, there's a rabbit, right? Like you you might not need that. Um, and if you definitely want to use magic, figure out how to make it more important to your world, how to make it unbelievably necessary where if you take it out, your entire plot crumbles. Um, and that's a really good question to think about. It can be a hard one because it's hard to admit <laughs> to yourself sometimes when you're trying to write a fantasy that magic might not be important. Um, but it is important to take a look at that because it really helps you understand A, where you might have gone wrong or B, that your magic system might not be strong enough. And so you go back to the drawing board and you figure out how to strengthen it to make it necessary, right? And then the last question kind of to ask yourself is, how does your magic system influence relationships? How does it influence your protagonist relationships with other people, your protagonist's relationship with themselves, other people's relationships? Um, uh, is there like humans against people who have magic um, or like paranormals within the paranormal community or the magic community? What are those relationships like? Are there different magics? Do the different magics battle each other? So there's all these different ways that you can add layers and kind of meet to your magic system by thinking how it it affects the characters and how it affects the characters' relationships with other characters. Because, I mean, really, if tomorrow all of a sudden we all wake up and some people have magic or there's magic in the world, you can sure as hell bet that's going to affect how we treat our family members, our friends, our neighbors, strangers on the street. It's going to completely disrupt our way of life as we know it. And so at some point when magic came into your world, that happened and that kind of influence it grows and manifests more and more over time it forms cliques and notions and these like inner relationships between people that it, and between the people and their surroundings too that's also a relationship to think about there's just different ways that that entire um, system would have affected how people treat each other and how they treat themselves. And that's very important because that will take you back to your character development um, as well. And I'm sure now you're starting to see how all of these little things intertwine and how they work together. And as you get further and further in plotting, you'll see um, how every time you plot a section, it changes something else in a different section that you've plotted as far as world building goes. And that's the beauty of it, right? And that's uh, why I love the magic portion of world building so much because that is the part that really strengthens and 
pokes holes and puts cracks in everything else that you've worked on so far. And as you work on those more and more and more, um, you will get a story that is so much stronger and so much more full and rich and more interesting to, to read, to live in than you would have if you didn't world build at all, or if you only world build minimally. Um, and again, with the magic system, as with, with everything else we've talked about, not everything has to end up on the page, but you as a writer should know your magic system because it will define how you write it. Um, and a lot of, like not a lot of times, but sometimes, it's, a lot of times it seems extreme, but sometimes you'll read like a part of a book or something and you, you, you're taking out of that story when there's magic involved and you don't know why. And it's because the author didn't stick to their magic system or they came up with something on the fly, but they didn't bother to go back and see how it relates to everything else. And so you as an author, it's your responsibility to know the details of your story. Um, and it doesn't mean you have to be like a planner or, or a pantser, um, but or a plotter, or a planner, sorry, planners on my mind. I'm obsessed with them. Um, but you should know your story. You should really, you should know it inside and out, um, even in the back of your mind somehow, right? It doesn't mean you have to breathe and live your story every single moment of the day. I mean, I've heard recently some people say that I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, but you should know the intricacies and the details of your story. And your magic system is a huge detail in that aspect. And so I think it's very important to take some time and truly develop it and give it room to breathe and give it the chance it deserves. Because for a fantasy novel, it's a big part of it, right? So we want to get it right. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of like basically what I have for some tips for building a magic system. Um, some of the main things, of course, you can play around more and get more into nitty gritty detail. But I think these are the, the big points you want to think about. Um, there's lots of resources online um, for questions to ask yourself, um, sheets to fill out. There's a ton of them. Just if you would just Google magic system templates or for fiction, magic system for fiction or something like that, there'll be a ton that comes up um, and so that's a good way to start just download as many of those as you can and fill them out and even if you do nothing with it you, it's a great exercise to um, kind of go through so yeah that's uh, kind of wraps up our magic portion of the world building <laughs> mini series um, we'll be back again next week like I said with a politics uh, portion of it which I think is also really fun and really important to world building um, and so, yeah, if you're into this kind of um, series, then make sure you stick around and check. I um, upload videos once a week um, and I try to make them as writing related as possible. Sometimes I do planning ones, which we haven't done in a while. But as soon as the series is over, we'll do like a plan with me or something like that, because that'll be fun. Um, and I don't know if you have heard already, if you've checked it out, but I have released the first few episodes of the Witch of Shadows audiobook on Monday, and there's new episodes coming on Saturday. So make sure that you're subscribed and you have that bell clicked on so you get notified when it comes on. And I'm going to be uploading twice a week until we are done with the audiobook. And I'm so excited because it's just such a great book and I'm really happy to share it with you guys. So with that said, I hope you guys are having an awesome possible springtime awakening situation um, and I hope that you stay magical and I will talk to you in the next week's video. Bye!